What's up, y'all? Welcome back to this week's episode of The Breakdown. Today, I have with me Mr. Ron Hammonds. Here we go. What's up, bro? Special guest. Yeah. So, Ron and I just kind of showed up wearing the same thing today. Yeah. I think I like your jacket well, better. Well, I feel like, as I said, this is the f- jacket you can wear any season in Nashville. Like, it's yeah, just the Nashville true. jacket. That's true. But I was certain nobody will wear it, but I'm pretty sure I picked yeah, it up Yeah, yeah. Ron woke up this morning and said, nobody wear denim on denim. No. And then I showed up wearing denim on denim. So, yeah. anyways, fun fact. So, today... Uh, we continued uh, in our series, When Jesus Shows Up, and the ne- title of today's message was Be Quiet and Listen. Mm. Be Quiet and Listen, mm. which is a phrase I heard quite a bit as a kid. Uh, it may have been said, yeah. like, shut up. <laughs> and yeah, my dad might use that when I heard place. it, dads, coaches, moms, yeah. whatever, you know. Yeah. Uh, but if I'm honest with you, like even right now, the majority of the time I get myself in trouble is when I don't listen and I just mm. talk instead. So anyways, today was a great message. If you have not heard it yet and you're watching this, I want to encourage you to hit pause on this video, go back and watch the message from this week, and then come back and hang out with us. We'll talk about some application yeah. and some stuff that we got out of it. Yeah. So Ryan is going to start us off by reading yeah, the passage, absolutely. which was Luke 9. 28 through 36. Yeah, so Luke 9, 28 says this. About eight days after this conversation, he took along Peter, John, and James and went up on the mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and those with him were in a deep sleep, and they became fully awake. They saw his glory and the two men who were standing with him. As the two men were departing from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let's set up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he was saying. While he was saying this, a cloud appeared and overshadowed them. They became afraid as they entered the cloud. Then a voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, the chosen one. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They kept silent, and at that time, no one told what they had seen. So we talked a little bit about listening. Yeah. Be quiet and yeah. listen. Yeah. Uh, and Pastor had one point this week, and that was this. Prayer requires more listening than talking. Yeah. More listening than talking. And you may be thinking, man, I... I don't really know a lot about prayer. You know, maybe you've grown up like I did and you prayed before a meal, you prayed for a game, you prayed before you took a big test. Uh, but it was just kind of like treating prayer like Santa Claus almost. Yeah. God, give me this, give me this, give me this. Yeah. And not really this communion and this fellowship and this intimate time with the Lord. And before we dive into this, just a little plug, uh, we actually have a whole podcast series that launches on October 21st on prayer. So we are walking through this book called Forgotten Power. Uh, so if you want to pick up that book, I love it. It's, it's up all about the theology of prayer, but it's really small, really well written for anybody to read and understand this. But we're walking through that on the podcast, myself, Andy, Brooke, uh, and Julie Woodruff. So you want to check that out. Mark your calendars for the Everyday Life podcast uh, by Long Hollow uh, on, for October 21st. So put that on your calendar. So anyways, yep. so prayer requires more yep. listening than talking. What kind of yeah. comes to mind when, when you yeah. hear that? Really for me, the first thing that comes to mind is my dad would always tell me a, a, as a kid, he would say, hey, Ryan, remember to listen more than you speak. And it's crazy, but our brains are almost programmed to speak more than listening. So yeah. for me to hear that prayer requires more listening than speaking yeah. is almost having to reimagine the way that I intake information. Because a lot of times, like you said, we go to the mm-hmm. Lord in prayer and we verbalize something that we want. Yeah. Even if it's not necessarily something we want, we feel like we have to do the majority of the talking and just full transparency. For me, a huge monumental spiritual marker in my life was whenever I've learned and I'm still working on how to slow down and listen for the voice of God. And that's hard sometimes because we have to cancel out the things that come in our mind and we want to speak those things back. But really, man, listening plays such a huge role in somebody's spiritual life. Yeah, and how does that play out everyday life? Like even while you were talking, and I'm thinking about this, like I'm doing what I'm about to say, but I have a hard time listening in any conversation because you're talking and I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to say next while you're still talking and I missed half of what you say. You know what I'm saying? Like we do that all the time in our daily interactions. And for me, I do that with God all the time. Like I had a, a friend of mine who I called on the phone one time and I'm having a conversation with him. I asked him a question and it was like this awkward pause. And then he answered yeah. the question. That was yeah, awkward yeah, when I yeah. did that, right? A little bit. So, so here's the thing. What he was doing is he was just listening to me. He was a great listener. He was just listening to me 
he processed it, and then he answered. And I'm like, man, that's a great thing I, I need to practice doing, but I need to do that in my time with the Lord as well, y'all. Like, I can't tell you how many times I have come to God, and it is me doing all the talking. Yeah. God, do this for me. God, will you be with me here? Will you give me the strength to do this? Will you be with so-and-so? Yeah. And it's just me asking, yeah. asking, asking. Yeah. Uh, but for the past year, Pastor has been teaching us the silence, the solitude, the sitting. Uh, maybe, Ryan, I, I don't know if that's something you've been practicing or not, but tell me yeah. what is one way you have practically learned to just listen for the Lord? Yeah. One of the ways I think that it, it, it comes back to is your approach. Uh, really, for me, the typical quiet time, if you'll call it, time with God is I'll spend some time in the Bible, 15, 20 minutes, and then I'll spend time verbalizing that back to the Lord. But really what I've done is I've started off that time listening and not even speaking right. and sitting in, in, in silence. And here's what I've learned from that. I've learned that the words that I'm about to read are actually going to land mm. on my heart in a completely different way yeah. if I could just sit and just let the sediment of my life. Pastors use the illustration before of a water bottle that you shake. If it had lake water in it, all this sediment would settle yeah. at the bottom. And that's exactly yeah. how it is in our own lives. Yeah. When we're willing to sit and to listen to God, the sediment of our lives begins to settle and we can hear the quiet voice of God. Yeah. Okay. So here's just some practical things I've learned. Cause, and everybody's different. You know what I'm saying? So you may be trying to think, okay, one, when is there a quiet moment in my house? I got three kids. Yeah, yeah. You know, I got all yeah, this stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You don't have that yet. It might be a little easier for you yeah. in this stage of life, but I don't know where you're at. Uh, but for me, I either have to choose early in the morning yep. or late at night. Okay. And early in the morning used to be my go-to. I'll be honest. I've actually found that late at night is best for me now, which is new. Like that is totally a new discipline to do it late at night. But I, honestly, I found myself being like, man, I don't have time to just sit in silence and pray. And then I'd watch like three or four episodes of something on Netflix. I was like, okay, yeah. I got time. Yeah, like I, if I got time for this, yeah. I got time for that. So, so what yeah. I did uh, is I just took my closet and I, I cleaned it out, which I need to do anyways. And then I just kind of created this safe space in my closet to get alone with the Lord. So for me, if it's perfectly silent, and then again, this is where people are different. If it's perfectly silent, my mind is all over the place. Like I'm thinking about all kinds of yeah. things. So I turn on just very low worship music like even on spotify i looked up like worship meditation you know so it's like really chill yeah. worship music and i play that that's just super good, quiet yeah. and what that does super. that just kind of helps create a quiet space almost and if it was just completely quiet my thoughts are going everywhere uh and then i practice like pastors been teaching us to sit in silence okay so now i'm sitting there in silence and uh pastor gave me this imagery which has really helped me he said imagine uh, that you're like sitting at the bottom of the ocean and there's boats going above you or whatever. And sometimes these boats will come by and these are the thoughts that that, that kind of will, will cross your mind. Oh man, this is what I really need to do tomorrow. This is on my to-do list. Oh man, I didn't get yeah. that accomplishment. That interaction was really weird with that person today, whatever. <laughs> these, these thoughts may be, he said, you have a choice to get on that boat or not. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, that yeah. imagery has helped me to go, okay, I'm going to sit here in silence. And when those thoughts come in, I'm not going to hop on that boat. I'm just going to let that boat keep going right. and kind of settle my mind again. And then for me, something mm -hmm. even even clicked one day. These thoughts would come in, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to actually throw that thought on a boat and let it, let it go. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So That's good. you know, I don't know what's going to help you sit in silence. But for me, it's fine. That quiet time, a little bit of music, intentionally just pr and, and practice, y'all. Like it is not going to happen overnight. I still struggle with it. I still struggle with the discipline of it. But when I do it, I'm always thankful that I did. So yeah. any other practical things well, you can think, think of? Well, and I think too, like one of the things that prevents us from listening so much, especially for me, has been pride. Right. I mean, truthfully, is this, hey, God, I've got it. I've got it under control. Yeah. And even if I don't necessarily say that, my actions uh, mm -hmm. my actions say that. And so to hear you even saying, like, I've got this space set up to be in silence yeah. with the Lord is encouraging to me. Because a lot of times we put our, our time with God in a box and we say, man, God, I'm going to give you 15 to 20 minutes of the day. And yeah. then out of that, I'll be able to tackle everything when in reality, what would it look like for us to create a sacred space yeah. to be with God and to say, hey, God, I don't have this. Even though there's maybe a decision that I'm praying right. through for you, it could be a decision in your family or career or whatever that is. But to say, Lord, I'm going to listen for wisdom. Um, something my dad always told me growing, growing up is he said, son, you only have so much to offer as you've received. 
And there's so much wisdom that you can gain simply by just looking for the voice of God in your life, the deci- decisions you make, discernment, um, right. the way that you speak to other people, mm-hmm. speaking words of affirmation, love to people um, is huge. And all that comes from listening. Yeah. You know, I was just thinking, man, we ask God for so much. And then we're going to close up to this. We ask God for so much, but how often do we neglect listening? Yeah. Like, what if I, I needed a bunch of information from you? I need you to help me make a decision. And I asked you all these questions. Hey, Ryan, can, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? Hey, can you help me with this? Boop. And I bounce. And I never wait to listen. Like, how do we expect to even hear what God's answer is if we don't yeah. stop, slow down, yeah. and listen? All right, y'all. So we're going to wrap this up, the breakdown this week. But I want to encourage you, carve out some time to listen. It may be early in the morning. It may be late at night. Um, it may be in the on your lunch break. It may be in your car, maybe in your closet, maybe sitting out by the lake. I don't know what it is for you, but put it on your calendar. Maybe schedule in some time to intentionally get alone with the Lord and just listen. And I promise you, as you develop this discipline, it's going to be something that you're thankful you did. All right, Ryan, man, I appreciate you joining me. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of The Breakdown. Thank you.